Hello and welcome on Eurosport. Hello and welcome from Imola for the San Marino Grand Prix at the Autodromo Enzo e Dino Ferrari, and that's in Italy. We're very close to Bologna. We're also very close to the start of the first session on a very sunny circuit. And John, I'm happy to say it's very warm. It looked overcast and cold this morning, but the weather, well, it's clear, dry, and about 27 degrees. That isn't any big surprise either. To see Starber out as quickly as possible. Bearing in mind what we've said just a moment ago about the time that they last in that 90 minute or the two, in fact, 45 minute sessions, as is that unofficial practice session as of 1994. Carl Wendlinger, his second year at Sauber, qualified 7th and 19th in Brazil and Ida, finished 6th in Brazil, scoring a point, and retired on lap 69 in the Pacific Grand Prix when he had a little coming together with Michele Alboreto. Well, I think to be fair to Wendlinger, he was well and truly attacked from behind by Michele Alboreto and uh, Wendlinger, more or less the innocent party, and uh, his race finished, sadly, when he could have been a point scorer for the second time in 94. Uh, both Sauber drivers actually scored points because hans Harold Frenzen scored his first World Championship point in Ida with fifth position. That 141 from uh, Carl Wendlinger. So far the fastest time, that was on his first lap, and now a 25.584. So the first lap... He's been very generous in his comments to Gianni Morbidelli. They signed the driver, he has affected a, a paying driver, but they've got a bit of a result. They've got a paying driver who actually is very effective indeed. And uh, Jackie Oliver, very complimentary as we said, about the quality of drivers he's got this year. Fittipaldi, Morbidelli, young, aggressive and hungry. And not a bad way to go for a team like Footwork who are in the course of rebuilding. his laps and progress but Martin John very disappointed not to finish in Ida he has he thought he had a podium position really in his sights and uh, unfortunately like with Mika Hakkinen and we've seen in the season so far it just got too warm and uh, finally then the whole thing shut down McLaren have worked extremely hard they've worked in the areas around the radiators to try and get as much airflow through the radiator boxes, the radiators themselves, to overcome the overheating problem that's basically dogged the team since the start of the season. And in fact, recently they were in France testing at a circuit known as Danielson, where they were doing specific aerodynamic tests to study airflow over and through the car. Well, Barretta in his Lotus on the grass, Back to Martin Brundle. The Brundle out, this is his first flying lap. A little bit of wagging of the tail from Brundle as he comes on to the start finish straight. And we have to wait to see, well, fourth quickest, 124, 443, not bad for an opener. Not bad because that's equaling his time he did this morning. So Martin Brundle as well we're looking for an improvement and if people keep improving the way they are john i think we should see an 80 second lap around this circuit before long michael schumacher but just a few seconds ago nicola Lorini has demoted heinz harold francis the second with a very good lap a 123 282 and that is nearly a full second faster than Lorini went this morning at the sound of that B12 Ferrari engine going past our commentary position, well, I would say that's revving well beyond the rumoured 15,000 RPM. That is their rev limit. It sounded like it was big portrait as Larini got that provisional pole lap. But here's a man I think will very quickly indeed demote Larini to being second quickest. And I wish we could just see into the Williams pit push. I'm quite sure Damon Hill, Ayrton 
center, Frank Williams, Patrick Head are glued to their monitor because this is the man that has haunted them all year. Slightly disappointing this morning though for Benetton and Ford. They didn't get the kind of performance with this revi revised Ford ZTEC R engine. And Schumacher just chucking the car all around the circuit. Both Schumacher and Leto claiming they did not have enough traction, but Schumacher has got enough traction for a 122.564, and uh, well, of course, that's also quicker than this morning, but 22.564 currently fastest. In front of Nicola Larini, Frenson, and now Leto is in second, then Larini, Frenson, Morbidelli, and Wendinger. So a Benetton 1-2, but we haven't seen either Williams out on the circuit yet. That time of Schumacher, exactly one second slower than Senna achieved this morning. And Schumacher, you can see how hard he's trying right over the curb on the exit of Aquamina Rally. And now he's his principal protagonist, Ayrton Senna. And the atmosphere in Williams here in Imola is very, very professional and very determined indeed. They are not happy about the performance of their car in the first two Grand Prix. They felt that certainly the outcome of the first corner shunt was not representative of what they would have expected in the Grand Prix itself. They thought that Senna could win in Japan. They're determined to make sure he does win here this weekend. Fighting spirit. Senna going up the hill to the chicane being watched by of course Frank Williams and the rest of the Williams team through the chicane and now it's a rundown where Damon Hill this morning ended up in the gravel well I've got a feeling this is one of those laps that Senna over many years has just managed to drag out of a car and this is in my view Senna at his most committed and most serious and we have to wait a few more seconds now as he exits onto the start finish straight well 22.4 is 0.8 of a second slower than he achieved this morning but it is his first flying and timed lap and it's good enough for professional pole so far so Ayrton Senna a 122.430 then it's Michael Schumacher on the one two. Oh, and there's a very big shunt. And that is indeed, that's at the exit of... Well, looking at it, it's difficult to tell who it is. Upside down, that car, both left hand wheels, front and rear are off. And we have to see the car pushed back. It's, a, yes, it's Rubens Barrichello, the man who's lying currently second in the World Championship. And that is a serious off for Barrichello. The red flag is out. The session has been stopped. And Professor Watkins straight to Rubens Barrichello, who's sitting in his car. He's now being attended. And we have just to wait a moment or two until we can see clearly what the situation is. But this very quick indeed to an incident, a heavy accident like this, heavy impact on the right hand side of the car, as we see. And the first thing that Professor Watkins does when he gets to a driver. Well, it's going through the Marlboro. Oh, yes. Literally, something in that Marlboro chicane went very badly wrong indeed. And it looks to me like something in the left front suspension and the steering, you can see, maybe that was, oh, and a very, very big impact indeed. High up into the tire barrier and the advertising signs just above that. So Professor Watkins now in attendance to Rubens Barrichello. The first thing to do is to stabilize any driver in this incident. The helmet is now off. They've got neck collars, and they will take as long as they feel is necessary to ensure the driver's comfort and safety. And then finally, when they're satisfied, they can begin to take Rubens from his car. While the doctors are working on Rubens Barrichello, getting him out of the car, Let's go through the standings at the moment. Ayrton Senna, Michael Schumacher are first and second. Then it's JJ Leto, Nicola Larini is fourth, Heinz Harald Frenzen fifth, 